So today we're going to be creating a thumbnail in the style of Legal Eagle. So if you're familiar with that channel or even if you're not, I'll put a quick preview up on the screen of one of their typical thumbnails. And um, I'll put a link to the channel down in the description if you want to check them out. Really good channel. So firstly, we'll click New Project. I'm using Photopea. You can use Photoshop or whatever you like, but I like Photopea because it's free. And then we'll go to this preset just called FB Event Image just because the resolution is perfect for a thumbnail. So that's what I'd always use as default. So we'll start it up now. The first thing I'll do is bring the other assets, so the images I'm going to use to make this thumbnail, uh, just in a separate tab. And I will include downloads to all these in the description box so you can follow along. I'm just going to click on the file. I've got them on my other uh, monitor, on the desktop on my other monitor. And you can just drag, bring them into the screen, hover it over the top where you'll see the top section light up, let go, and it will just put it in as another tab so we can then work on them separately and then they bring them into the main thumbnail project. So that is one, which is the main, which is the equivalent of the legal eagle himself, which is called Devin, but this is just our knockoff version for the sake of this thumbnail. And the generally for this type of thumbnail, they'll have three subjects normally, one on the left, one on the right, and then the central subject in the middle. So I'm just going to bring in a couple more. I just got these from Pexels. There we go stock free stock image website and then there's a couple of background textures which i'm going to bring in which don't really relate to anything this is just i'll show you this is just something to add a bit more character to the thumbnail so once i've got these all loaded into my tabs it's just good to get organized we're going to go back to the new project and i'm going to press command or control r depends on if you're a pc or a mac whether it's command or control of course and i'm going to get this ruler on the left hand side clicking the ruler and drag a guide out now what we're looking for is we're looking for as the center point and if you see when we bring it roughly here it snaps in the middle so it'll automatically snap to what it detects as the center point of the canvas which is helpful and then we can just press Control or command r to get rid of the ruler again this is just so we keep things nice and straight when we're nice and centralized and even when we're adding our elements so first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut out this guy here who's going to be in the middle of the thumbnail. And to do this, I'm just going to press W as a shortcut key to just get to my magic wand. But we're not using the magic wand. We just want to access the select subject, which is under the tools in this particular menu. So magic wand, quick selection or object selection. If you have either of those selected, you will have the select subject option, which in most cases is really good and saves a ton of time. I'm just going to press select subject and you can see it's done a really good job of creating a selection there. I just click the layer mask icon just to um, cut that out um, as a layer mask and then I'm going to control or command C on that on the actual background layer there and I'm going to paste it in to our new document. Now <clears throat> I'm just going to rename some of these layers as I do it. I'm just going to put center just to make it make it a little bit easier to follow. And then I'm going to transform control or command T. And I'm just going to bring this up because I know that when we when we put the other elements in, it's normally quite big in the center. And what we can do now is we can bring our other two elements in. So we've got two people. So again, we're going to go here. I'm going to do the same thing. Press W just to get to our magic wand tool so we can click select subject. And it's going to think about it for a second. And we're going to click the layer mask again. I'm going to press again, I'm going to copy. Or you could just go edit, copy, edit, paste if you want to use the menus. So go in here, we'll paste, but I'm going to do it with a shortcut, which is Control or Command V. Okay. I'm going to get these more organized in a minute, by the way. So I'm just going to leave it uh, nice and big there for the moment. And I'm just going to bring in the other person now. So we've got here, same thing. I'm just going to speed this up quickly because, oops, didn't mean to go into that one because you don't need to see me do this all again, but I'll bring the elements in and then I'll cut back. Okay, so we've got our three main subjects in the shot now. So what I need to do is 
bit of organisation quickly, and you'll thank yourself later for this, because we've got the left side and the right side, basically, this thumbnail split in two. So I'm going to I'm gonna do that. I'm going to create a couple of folders, and one of them I'm going to call left, and one of them I'm going to call right. Just keep it as simple as possible, because we're going to have colours and other things in. So in the left side, we're going to drag this image in here, and on the right side, we're going to drag this guy here into that. Make sure they're in the actual folders. There we go. And we do this because we can put a layer mask on. So we can affect everything just on that side, including colours, background text and things like that. So to do that, I'm just going to bring our guide back up that we made earlier, which, by the way, the shortcut for that is Control or Command and the semicolon button. It is on a Mac anyway. I apologise if it's not that on a PC, but you can go View, Show, and then you can turn the guides on and off from this menu here. So I'm going to bring that up. Oh, so let me zoom back out. And press M for the rectangular select tool. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle over here and snap it to the middle. And then in our left folder, I'm just going to click the layer mask button. And I'm going to click the right the folder called right. I'm going to do the same thing. Drag the, the rectangle across, put the layer mask button. So now what we're doing here is we're basically saying that everything in that folder called right will only affect that exact right hand side of the, of the image. And because we've got them all behind our guy in the front here, it means that he's always going to stick out in the foreground. So looking at the, looking at the original legal eagle thumbnail, they've always got a combination of red and blue on the opposite sides. Sometimes they switch round, but it doesn't really seem to have any order to it. And that's because they're really good contrasting colours, but they're also very good, what I would call youtube colours, like a lot of... Sorry, so I'm just going to the... I'm talking here when I should be telling you what to do. So go to the adjustment layers icon at the bottom and go to colour fill. And I'm just going to choose a red for this side. It doesn't have to be anything specific, just a nice bright red. I'm going to drag that under the subject. The person there is sticking out over the top. And I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to do the same with a blue colour. Now, as I was saying, they're just very good youtube colours, as in a lot of classic YouTube designs, YouTube videos. People have got blue and red lighting, and it's just a colour combination that has been historically really popular on YouTube. So, I'm, again, I'm going to drag that behind. Now... We need to flip these people so they're facing in towards the middle because it's like a versus thing normally. There's normally that kind of conflict going on. So I'm going to flip flip, flip this one. And I'm just going to shrink them down a bit. I want them to be quite big, but don't want them to be sticking, cutting off the top of the head on this one. So let's just do something around... Something around there. And also, if you noticed on this, I've chosen this example. So the guy who's going in front of the blue background has got a blue colour T-shirt on. So try for the people in this type of thumbnail. So it's good to either have neutral clothes or clothes that are match the colour of the background. So if we go to the left-hand side here, I'm going to just flip horizontally, scale this down. And this person's wearing a black, just a plain black top so that's fine as well you just want to make those color backgrounds the strong element of the color and you don't want any other colors on the image to clash really so now we've got this to this stage we've got a couple of more things we need to do to tie this together one thing i have noticed and this is my actually my mistake from earlier is on the cutout here of our main subject in the middle we cut him out properly but in reality on the legal eagle channel thumbnails it's got like a really nice almost cut out paper border effect around them so we needn't have cut him out properly like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually delete the layer mask and i'm going to make another one using the correct technique so for this i'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool or you can use the pen tool and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start just go roughly Give a little bit of gap like this outside the clothes and just really roughly follow the outline going in and out. Just make sure you don't get too close or too far away from the outline. Keep it relatively even. If you make a mistake, you can just control or command Z to get rid of it. 
and you really don't have to be precise, but it's just roughly following it using straight angles like this, no curves, so it gets it like a rough paper cutout look, and this helps to make this really pop off. You can just do the proper cutout as I did before and put a stroke on it in the layer effects. That would have a similar um, effect, but this is more how it's done. So now, so now on this, I'm now going to click the layer mask button to make this a layer mask. So now you see we've got this white paper cutout, cutout effect, which is actually nice. And it also goes off the top of the frame to hide the split of the two colors. Now onto this, there's a little drop shadow we can put on. So double click on that, that layer. And I'm just going to go drop shadow. And I'm just going to put the distance to zero. So it's, it's more of a, an outer glow, really. Just a dark color, like black. You can set it to multiply, or it probably won't matter, normal or multiply, some, something like that. To just the opacity. You don't need to be super obvious, and che otherwise it gets a bit cheesy, but just something that helps to uh, helps to just make them pop off the background a little bit more. Something like that really helps. So now I want to put some texture into the backgrounds of these two, because there's quite often some kind of an image as part of the colored background as well, just to give it some extra context. So here I've just got this sort of random stocks. I don't know what it is background, but I'm going to just put it in. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in behind this one. I'm going to, I'm going to bring the scale down a bit on this just so it's a bit more legible. And by the way, you can see I'm doing that by when I've got the layer selected, you can go up to the top here where it's like the height and the width, and you can actually just click and hold on the H or the W. And as long as your little chain link icons selected here, it will um, it will increase or decrease the size of that layer proportionally so we can scale down without having to reach for the corner handles all the time. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to press Command or Control U, which come to our hue saturation, and I'm just going to desaturate it. Okay, just so it doesn't introduce any funny colors. Now I'm going to change the blend mode, in this case, I think to overlay. So now we've got the color that we wanted in the background, but we've got that like texture as well. And this is good because it means we can now go into this color layer we made earlier and we can change it to a darker red, brighter red. We can move it around how we want. And maybe you can drop the opacity of the, of the background layer or you can blur it and you can do all manner of things. So I'm just gonna quickly do the same for, you see, where am I going here? There we go. I'm just going to do the same for the other side. So I'm just going to copy this layer and I'm just going to paste it in to our blue side. Command or Control V to paste it in. Again, I'm pressing Control or Command T to select this layer to transform it, to bring the transform box up. But if that doesn't work, as I think if you're doing it in some browsers, um, it might actually create a new tab in your browser or something if you use that shortcut. So if in doubt, just go to your move tool here at the top and click transform controls and it will temporarily apply the transform box. But anyway, whichever way you prefer to do it, I'm going to just scale down this money image. I'm just going to put it behind like that. And same thing as before. Control or Command U, desaturate, just so it doesn't introduce some other colors in. And in this case, put it to overlay, and we can now go to this color again and maybe choose a little bit more of a rich blue, something like that. Okay. And again, you can drop the opacity of that texture, have it really minimal like that. You can blur it a little bit. In fact, let's do that on this. Let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of blur so you can still tell what it is, but so it's not as, di so it's not as distracting. And I think we'll do exactly the same thing on the other side. So just a little bit. You still want to be able to see what it is. Okay, so this is looking pretty good now. There are a couple of, there are a couple of tweaks I want to make to the colors of the actual main subjects here and a couple of other bits like the layer mask so 
On the right hand side, we've got this image with this guy like really contrasty, almost like matching the contrast of the main subject in the middle. So it's a real contrast, but then on the other side, it's a little bit more washed out. So we want to try and balance those a little bit together. So on the right hand side, I think we could do with lightening up some of the really dark areas of the hair and the beard. It all look, kind of looks a bit blocked out. Really good thing to do now is the camera raw filter because this has been up updated recently. So we go to the filter menu and go to camera raw. Now in photo P you've got, you can change the, um, these main basic controls. And at the bottom, you've got some other things now, texture, clarity, dehaze, which I'll show you in a minute. But for the purposes of this, I want to just brighten up some of the shadow. So I'm literally going to go to the shadow slider and just drag it to the right until it just opens up those shadows a bit. Now you can use this, as you can see, you don't have to use the camera raw filter on raw files. You can use it on any open file just to access these slightly different controls. So I'm going to click OK to that. So it's just opened up those shadows a little bit and made it look a little bit, um, just a little bit brighter and a little bit more punchy. So now to balance it out, I'm going to go to the other side. and I'm going to go to camera raw filter on this side. But for this one, I need to add a bit of punch and a bit of sort of contrast to the image. So what I'm going to do for this, and uh, just give it a little bit more of that 3D look, I'm just going to go down to the cloud slider down here under the effects section. And if I drag that up too much, it's going to start looking a bit weird, but you can see what it's doing. It's really enhancing certain areas of highlight and shadow to almost give it a little bit of a fake dodge and burn look. And it's just going to bring it a little bit closer in appearance to the other side. And once we've done that, the absolute final tweaks I would do on this is just tweak the masks around the people here, just because we've got a slight edge. If I zoom in, you can see around the hair, there's like a little white, there's some little white edges around here where they're not perfectly cut out. And you could say, yeah, it's going to be a thumbnail that big, who cares? But if you're like me and you're, you really care about the details, then there's an easy fix for this. You just select the layer mask, go to this tool here, which is your blur tool normally, and go to select the smudge tool. Set the strength to something low, like 5 or 10%. Make sure you're on the actual layer mask and not the pixel layer itself. And what we're going to do now is we're going to smudge the mask inwards. So what we're doing is we're pushing the mask, and I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see this. We're pushing the mask inwards. So we're basically making that white border area disappear. And the beauty of doing it this way, it takes a little bit of time, not too much time, is areas where you don't need to do it, you just skip over. Whereas if you do some kind of overall, and you can change the size of your brush. If you do some kind of overall change on some overall adjustment to the layer mask, then it might take it too far in certain areas and not far enough in other areas.